Hello, people. Hey, John. Am I audible? Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Had some trouble going live using my streaming software. It was bugging out a bit. So yeah, welcome to, to today's live class. And if I'm audible, kindly, if anybody just um, that puts it down in the comment section, just, no, just need a green signal that I am audible. Right. Thank you, Sayuki. So, all right. So today's live class is going to be about how you can animate your art. So assuming that all of you are digital artists and you're very keen on presenting your art on social media or be it your portfolio. And well, as artists, what we want to do is just not present our art in the best possible way, right? So make it look beautiful and eye-catching and grab people's attention, get them to look at our art for uh, a longer period of time and just appreciate it and just, just help our art stand out because to be honest, the competition out there is huge. There are a lot of artists out there, talented artists and well, frankly, artists who are more talented than you, more talented than me. They're always, there's always someone who who's better because if they have been doing it for a longer time, they have more experience. So overall, they're just good at art compared to us. And there are a lot of people out there like that. And, and we are competing with them, like it or not. So the odds are sometimes against us. So in order to turn the odds, you know, in our favor, sometimes we have to do the most out of the little that we have. And that's when presentation comes into play how you can present your art in such a way that they are you know great to look at and eye-catching and tension grabbing and just so that they, they stand out so that's when today's class comes in so it's great if you're a great artist it's it's nice that you, you create a wonderful art but what if you can take it to the next step next level not in terms of art, but what if you can add a whole new dimension to your art? A whole new dimension to your art. And when I, what I mean by a whole new dimension, I mean animating your art. So, yeah, Seek and Yesho Fine is saying that competing with AI-generated art that keeps getting better every month. Honestly, yeah, the future is it's a mystery. Uh, I don't want to sound too pessimistic because uh, the last time I made a bunch of videos on AI, it was still good, but not that advanced. It was at a stage where AI art was doing amazing job. You're putting in prompts and it's giving you great results, but they had, they were flawed. They had a lot of problems. They had their flaws, but I'm talking about the initial days of DALI and um, initial days of DALI and uh, Disco Diffusion and Mid Journey, I'm talking about like three, four months back. And then things just went out of hand with Stable Diffusion and, and uh, you know, like the newer, the most latest version of all these AIs, they're going crazy. I mean, the kind of results they keep giving are like hyper realistic and so accurate. And the sampling from very few images and giving you exactly what you want. I mean, it's crazy. I don't see, I don't see how humans can compete with them when it comes to visualizing crazy things that uh, you just don't visualize on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, yeah. So concept art is, I don't know, they might be obsolete in a few years. I hate to say it, but that's very much possible. Concept art is going obsolete because computers are coming up with concepts now and they are so accurate 
and crazy you know so yeah competing we are competing with ai so that's that's a different dimension altogether but yeah we as an artist we all are at a certain level and we can take it to the next level well of course we can practice more we can try harder we can draw every day so that we can just level up and just overall be good at art be much more better in art and and create better art so that we can compete with ai or we can compete with great artists out there who who are better than us of course we can do that but for the time being let's say you have a bunch of art ready and you just want to put it out there you want to put it in your social media on your facebook your instagram your behance and the art station and a whole lot of bunch of other places you want to apply for jobs and apply for gigs and what not and put it in a portfolio and so or even you can put it on your youtube as demo reel show reels and what not so yeah you can put up artworks i mean jpegs of your art you know jpegs or png of your art the you know, static image like this that's fine that's that's very yesterday okay but if you really want to make them stand out and grab attention then i think you should go for uh animating them so well, when it comes to animation well people think that well that is that's, that's a very technical thing like i'm not an animator I'm, i have no experience i have zero experience in animating how can i just just animate my art one fine day right animating my art when i have zero uh experience or idea in animating or uh, how can i just do that it takes a lot of experience and technical knowledge knowing softwares and the basics of animating and what not i don't know any of that so how how do i just animate my art let me tell you this yeah you yes you can without any of those you can and that's exactly how easy it is and that is exactly how simple and easy this technique is that i'm going to teach today and it's going to be a very short live class okay, just, it's mostly going to be an introduction just enough to help you animate your art but also i'm going to go live once again next week sunday around the same time i'm going to going to i'm going to go into a bit more detail with more examples so make sure to attend that class as well and after that you know you can just expect to make your art stand out a lot out there and it's going to help you make a better portfolio so just to give you a glimpse of what i mean by taking your art to the next level and making it look better and in a very easy way and make keep note that this for beginners okay if you're someone who has zero experience of animation and yet you want to make you you want you want to animate your art very easily in just a few minutes this is for you this is for absolute beginners okay nothing complex nothing technical very easy so if you saw the trailer for this live class then well and good but if you didn't well here's a you know sneak peek into what i really mean so well either you can represent your art like this static image or you can animate it and show it like this so either you can show it like this you know the uh, static image or you can animate it and make them look cool and epic like this like this bunch of examples for you to look at okay animating them taking them to the next level yeah so that's what's possible that's something that you can do and it takes only a few minutes that's how easy it is without any prior experience so what do you think how is that right so and yeah here's how you know so now what i'm going to show is i'm going to show how do how you can animate backgrounds or background environments today so and next week's class next sunday is going to be about characters and characters can be a little more technical i mean it's not the whole process not the technical but characters can be a slightly more time consuming and it might need a bit more tinkering with 
so that's gonna be next week chap next week's live class uh yeah so make sure to attend that class as well for more in-depth knowledge so so today i'm going to show you how you can turn this okay this is a background image how you can turn this into this so this is what today's live class is going to be about um well let's say today is the turning point okay till today you were this is how you were presenting your art aesthetic images as uh simple fat good old-fashioned jpeg images or pngs that don't move but from today with the new knowledge that you take back from this you're going to be able to turn your artworks into animations like this simple but effective cool just adding a whole three-dimensional depth to your artwork and that's what today's live class is going to be about and next week's class is going to be about animating characters so you have uh like the video i just showed a quick demo trailer so you can you have your art and how you can easily you know animate your art your characters and make them look more uh three-dimensional like this that's going to be next week's uh video so yeah that's a that's a quick brief about what we're going to be learning today so without further ado let's just jump straight into uh, how we can do that very easily all right so, so let me close this psd and just op let me open the one that we're going to be working with okay so let's say you have this psd you have this background so the first thing the first checklist that you need to look at is that you should have uh, your artwork, your PSD file, your source file in such a way uh, that all the layers are in set, all, all the, everything is separate. Now, what I mean by everything is that, um, well, you can split your background, since we're talking about backgrounds this time, uh, landscapes, backgrounds, environments, we're talking about a scene. Uh, it can be outdoor, ex uh, indoor, outdoor, mostly outdoor. So what you can do is you can split your scene into uh, foreground, background, and midground. So foreground being the objects nearest to you, that is um, these vines and roots in the swamp right in front of us, right in front of the camera, the nearest thing to you is your foreground. Uh, and the things that are far away from you, but not that far away, like uh, not something that's like, Near the horizon, not that far away, something in the middle is the midground. Like for example, if this is a swamp or a lake, so you know this water body or this huge tree, this can be our midground. And background is something that's really really far away. Okay, so this is our background. So this is how you can uh, maintain the layer of your art. So it's great if you can create your art in such a way from the very start, so that uh, you, as you go about creating the art, you make sure that everything is separate from the start. You render everything separately on separate layers and you can merge them accordingly. Or if you do not have uh, your file organized in that way, then you might have to uh, do that later on at the very ending. Uh, you know, putting them in a separate layer it can be a, a bit of a tricky job. It can be a bit uh, and frustrating at times. If you don't usually maintain an organized layering structure so and i'm going to get go, go into details about that next class when i uh next week in the next live class when i teach you how you can animate characters i'm going to show you how you can you know separate a character split them into different layers and different body parts put them in different layers and it's very easy i'm going to show that and go into more details about that in next class so today Let's assume that you have an image, you have a PSD of your art, your background art, and everything is in separate layer, foreground, background, midground, separate in that order. So let's say this is our immediate back, uh, foreground, these rocks and these uh, roots and shrubs, absolutely in front of the camera, okay? This is our immediate foreground. This can be our far foreground, something that's not very near to the camera, but still 
uh, somewhat far away and then the this tree and this um this lake or swamp can be the mid ground and this is our background simple and easy and make sure the layering structure is in such a way that the foreground is at the top the middle ground mid ground be below that and the background layers at the very bottom that should be the order of your layers okay that is step number one to make sure that uh, everything is separated according to depth that's point number one easy peasy right point number two is you got to make sure that all the layers are converted to smart objects so right now when you when, when you uh, when you're creating art in photoshop uh, or you merging layers and all that it's usually a, a non smart layer okay it's a rasterized layer so you can convert it into smart smart object by right clicking on the thumbnail or, or on the layer and you get this option called convert to smart smart object so once you click on that you see this uh the symbol this uh image symbol popping up at the bottom right corner of the thumbnail of your um of your layer so well some of you might be wondering that how how do i see this images on my uh, layers the thumbnails they are so clear and big but for you it's like all you get to see are the are the names of the layer so well i you can you can try this setting is very very helpful uh, especially if you're, you're using a file handling a file that has a lot of layers it can get confusing just to just reading the name of the layer and knowing what the layer has it's uh, it can be confusing but if you can look at what exactly the layer has, then that's a lot easier. So what you can do, if you want to have, if you want your Photoshop to look just like mine, what you can do is you can go to the thumbnail of the layer, any any layer, basically right click on the thumbnail, and it, you get this uh, option like no thumbnail, right? And then there's small thumbnails. So most probably for you, it's set to no thumbnail and clip thumbnails to document bound okay that's that's uh what your thumbnails probably look at uh, look like so what i do is i set them to large thumbnails not medium but large thumbnails yeah they take a bit more space but they are good to look at and helpful uh, and the other thing that i do is i set this to clip thumbnail to layer bound so what that does is that you get to see exactly the part that is in that layer even if it's dot you get to see just the dot and not the entire screen which can be confusing because if you have a dot and it's it's a very tiny dot then in the thumbnail you get to see mostly nothing because a, th a dot compared to that entire uh, canvas size is like nothing you get to see a transparent layer and it can be confusing so this is what i do right click on the thumbnail large thumbnail and clip thumbnail to layer bounds that way you can easily see what exactly is in the thumbnail what's up with the thumbnail you can see it okay so that's something that that uh, i personally found very very helpful and so can you okay that's a pro tip uh, you can use it okay so so yeah coming back to the topic so the second second step is converting your um layers into smart objects so you should you have to do that one by one for each layer separately you can't just select a bunch of layers and convert them to smart objects at the same time what it'll do is that it'll merge all the layers together and create one layer that is smart object so you can't do that you have to individually convert them to smart objects so let me just quickly do that right click convert to smart object right click convert to smart object and yeah so luckily i don't have a lot of layers I have very few layers so it's easy so just making sure that everything is in smart layers if for F, okay fg stands for foreground uh mg is for midground and bg is for background so that's how i named my layers cool so once that is done once you've converted everything into smart layers what you're going to do next is you want to go to windows and go all the way down you'll find timelines click on timeline and it'll 
bring up this um yeah this timeline panel so usually what you see here is create video timeline that's what you see so let me just create a dummy no, a dummy document just to show you how it looks so maybe you have uh let's say these two layers and i've converted them to uh smart objects and i want to animate them so when you when you open uh timeline for the first time from windows this is what you see you see it's a it's a blank panel and it has this create video timeline in the center sometimes it can be create frame animation also okay so you gotta click on this you know down arrow and just select create video timeline and then just click on it and it'll give you this um timeline okay all right let me close the dummy psd and just head back to our main file okay so once you click on create video time uh, video timeline it's gonna show you it's, it's basically a duplicate of your layer panel okay it's an exact duplicate uh i mean in terms of the order except you have some it's a timeline it's a video timeline so you get to play if you click on the play button or press space on the keyboard uh it plays i can see this slider moving from left to right so this is a video timeline and the numbers at the top represent the number of frames the number of seconds that you want to play for so here's this is one second this is two second so Two seconds might be enough for this video. So I'm gonna go to this thing at the top and just drag it all the way back to somewhere around here. So this is where our video actually ends. It's not gonna render any more than that. So if you play on uh, display, you can see the video or the slider just stopping right here. It won't go beyond this. So this is our range, basically. All the animation that we're gonna be doing is gonna be bound within this much area, okay? nice and simple so all the movement and everything is going to happen within this part so let me uh, zoom into that much area there because that's going to be where we'll be operating so at the bottom here you can see one more slider this is for zooming in and zooming out so if you want to see things in more detail you can zoom in like this and you can see the whole timeline sort of expanding okay so just to give you a quick brief of the interface of this this is how it looks right so uh, okay so this was step number three creating the video timeline and so now step number four is uh, just opening or expanding on the layers so if you go all the way to the left side of this uh, panel you get to see all the layers that we have okay so what you want to do is click on the expand or this right arrow click on it and it'll just expand you'll see some drop downs coming okay click on it and it'll expand so you have to expand that for all the layers so mg1 lg3 lg2 lg1 great so i just expanded all of the layers so there you'll see three options transform opacity and style so opacity and transform is something that comes in handy if you want to animate some layer fading in fading out then opacity is your uh, thing and transform is when you want to change the scale or position of a layer then yeah transform is what you go with okay that's just to give you an idea for so for animating this scene all you'll need is transform okay forget about opacity forget about style you don't even have to look at those transform is your man for the job so what you'll be doing is keep the slider at the starting point that is this this a uh, very starting point this is your frame number one this is where things start things uh, start rolling and once you have that you need to click on this tiny stopwatch uh, stopwatch or timer uh, button for every single layer okay so just and once you do that you will see this yellow colored diamond shape popping up it means that um, a keyframe has been set and you can just go and do that for all the layers just keep you know scrolling down and do the same for all the layers no this is like no brainer easy peasy 
So you have to make sure that the yellow diamond has now appeared right uh, next to the transform option for all the layers that we have. Okay, just making sure. Cool. So what a keyframe is, it's like a, well, it's like a marker. It marks the position of a layer. So right now the key for keyframe marks the current position for all the layers, which is the way we see them. So now I'm going to go to the final position that is well all the way to the right where we just uh, wanted our video to end somewhere around here. So this is where we are going to be marking the end point of the whole animation. Okay, so so whatever keyframe we set for this layer is going to be the final position and the computer or Photoshop is going to animate at the in between that is from this starting point or this starting uh, keyframe to the last keyframe that we're going to be setting in some time, the computer is going to animate whatever goes on between this point and this point. That's the magic of animation or keyframe animation. All you have to do is to set the position and the computer just, just, just calculates whatever goes on in between. You don't need to do anything, especially not for this. Okay, so uh, all right, so just answering a couple of questions. Marco, this is going to be a video or just a stream? Yes, this is a stream, but it's also a video. So after the stream ends, this video is going to be available on my channel. So you can come back and watch it anytime. Uh, anytime. So yeah, repeat. Uh, yeah, you can definitely watch it later. And um, someone just sent me uh linkedin connection well yeah i'll be accepting and all right some spams there spammers okay so yeah now uh, let's go back to animating it just a couple of minutes and this will be done okay that's how easy it is so so once you have uh, clicked on the timer option and just you have that uh, yellow diamond uh, keyframe set for all the layers at the starting position which is on the extreme left corner, the very starting position. Next, you have to go all the way to the very last point of the timeline for this. And next, I'm gonna select all the layers, okay? All the layers that I have. So I'm gonna click on foreground FG1 and go all the way down to BG1 while holding shift on my keyboard. That way I can select all the layers. Or if you want, you can do that one by one. You can just hold control and just one by one select all the layers and just no, select all of them. Uh, once that is done, I have to press Control T on your keyboard. Control T brings up the free transform option. So this helps you like scale your image up and down or uh, however way you want. So what we want to do is scale it up, but from the dead center. So this is our pivot point or anchor point which is the absolute center of the whole composition, or you can call this the vanishing point. So if, you're, uh, if you are familiar with um, vanishing point and perspective, so vanishing point is like where all the perspective lines in our scene just meets the, uh, along the horizon. So if this is a vanishing point, we might, we want our uh, whole scene to expand like that. So imagine there's a camera, okay? This is the, what you're seeing now is through a camera and the camera is slowly moving in. It is tracking in. So that's the kind of animation we're trying to create. That's the kind of parallax uh, effect of three-dimensional feel. Like the, uh, the camera is actually present in the scene and it's actually going in. So how are we gonna create that depth in the space? Okay, so after pressing Control T, I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard. Uh, for some of you, it might all the plus shift. For some of you, for some of you, it might be just alt. So people using older version might need alt and shift. People using newer versions might need just alt, nothing else. Okay, so just hold those and just uh, click on any of the corner pointers and just scale it up like this. Okay. Mm, yeah, this much is fine. I'll press enter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect one of the layers, just one by one from below. So first of all, I'm going to be pressing control on my keyboard and deselecting the background 
uh, layer from the selection of all the layers, okay? So just to give you an idea of how it looks, if I use this scroller to go back, you can see my whole uh, frame animating, the whole composition just, there's a zoom in effect as if the camera is going in, but it doesn't look too authentic or too, uh, two, three, men, three dimension. It's like someone just you know, zooming into a image. You don't get to get that 3D feel. So we're gonna create. We're gonna be creating that 3D feel now. So make sure that uh, all the layers are selected, except for the very last layer, that is the background layer. And now I'm gonna press Control T, and I'm gonna zoom it a bit more this time. Okay, done. And press Enter. Now I'm gonna deselect the last layer, which is at the moment, mid ground two, that is the last layer that we have. I'm gonna click on that and deselect it using control click. And once again, control T and move it outwards or just scale it up like this. Press enter. So if you go down and check the layers, you have uh, this keyframe, the second keyframe of the final pointer set automatically. I didn't have to go and click on any of these. Uh, diamond shape, diamond icon, or uh, stopwatch icon. So anytime you make a change anywhere on the timeline, this keyframe is gonna show up, marking a change, a sudden change that has taken place, okay? So if I just do a quick scroll, you can see the difference that is happening right now. This is, this is what it looks like, okay? So once again, I'm gonna deselect this layer, and now we have just the top three layers selected. So control T and once again, zoom them out a bit more. Enter, deselect this. And now we have the first two layers selected. Control T and again, zoom them out a bit more so that they're completely out of the frame and enter. And yeah, so at this point, both the layers are, you know, not visible in the screen. If I play it like this, so this is what it looks like. So right now it, it's, it feels a bit choppy. So what I have to do is I have to buffer the whole thing. So just, just you have to click on play once and let it buffer, let it play. Okay, let the whole line become green. And once that is done, you can, you can just zoom in a bit more and just play it. And yeah, that is how it looks. Isn't that beautiful? Imagine the possibilities. Imagine how you can make your art, you know, look, can add a completely new dimension, a breath of fresh air, and take your art to the next level using this very simple and easy technique that comprises of just a few very, very simple, no-brainer steps, and it takes just a few minutes, okay? So that, that's how you do it. And uh, as I said, this is gonna be a very short video, very short stream. So yeah, uh, this is how you do this, and make sure that you're present in next week's, next Sunday's live class, where I'll be going into a bit more depth. I'll be animating characters. For those of you who joined the uh, stream a bit later, let me just uh, give you a brief idea of what we will be doing in next uh, next week's video, <clears throat> next week's class. So we're gonna be animating actual characters, your characters. So, I mean, if you have characters, you're gonna be able to animate them. So if you have, if you have illustrated characters like this, you can make them look like this. That's right. You can make your art just, you know, blasting out of the screen and popping out very easily. Yeah. That's what we are going to be learning in next week's live class. And this is so, so easy to create, so simple. You need nothing you, you need no experience in animating whatsoever because that's how easy it is 
So that's going to be next week's lesson, next week's class all about creating, um, uh, just turning your character illustrations into uh, gorgeous animations. And, you know, I might actually repeat the background animation process as well at the end if there's enough time. So, yeah. So that's that's the thing. So I really want to see you guys animating your art uh, and posting them on social media. Okay. So if you're on Instagram, make sure you tag me so you can use the hashtag uh, hashtag the geek artist. I'm just typing it down in the comment in, in the chat box. The geek artist. You can use this hashtag, or if you want to tag me, you can use my Instagram Instagram handle, uh, TGA the Geek Artist. So, if you want to tag me in your art once you upload that uh, onto Instagram, you can use that. Uh, and yeah, I'll be checking out your stuff. I'm really looking forward to um, seeing you guys animating your art and just making them look crazy good. Okay and yep so that's all for today's live stream and hope you guys had a wonderful day and people on the other side of the world hope you guys have a nice day ahead of you so see you guys again hopefully in next week's live class so once again thank you so much for attending today's live stream if you're new to my channel make sure to you know, check out my other videos and yeah, so thank you for uh, attending the class and